gay community are mobilising support against a bill which seeks to ban the promotion of homosexuality by local councils. From the time the place tomorrow, we continue the debate live at 10.30. Next year on Thames this evening, they're back. All the glamour of L.A. law. A dead body and a curious inspector. An impatient chief. A violent man. A widow, a son, a barman, plus... A photographer and a beautiful but tricky woman. Tomorrow, 11.30 on 4. He died with his eyes open. At Chiller, through the night, Thursday on Thames. At 3, the Torture Garden, a sinister sideshow. Look, there's Carla Hayes. Isn't she a doll? A living doll. I'm in love with you. No, you can't be in love with me. What happened? What is it about Dr. Hines? Oh. How soon can you operate? Immediately. In the grip of terror at three. Behind bars, prisoner cell block H. On both sides of the law, Kojak. A new edition for Too Close to Comfort. And there's ITN World News followed by CNN Headline News through Thursday night to Friday morning on Thames. When your car won't start, Car Fix It from Marshall Cavendish tells you where to start. In issue one, what causes 90% of starting problems? Photographs help you find the part to work on. There are tips like how a loudspeaker can get you out of trouble and diagrams to put it all back together. Car Fix It divides jobs into easy stages, shows you how you can get away without special tools, how your car works. For filing in these practical binders, Car Fix It. B&Q money off vouchers in part one. There's a pain reliever available without prescription that has two pain-killing ingredients, paracetamol and codeine. It's called Solpadine, delivering relief in an effervescent formula to get to work fast. So now, when pain strikes, hit back with double-action Solpadine. Effervescent and now in capsule form, Solpadine has the power to hit pain where it hurts. Over 120 branches throughout Britain. Powerful connections to thousands of jobs. The most advanced office systems training in the country. And that means more opportunities for temporary and permanent office staff than ever before. With the energy and the power to match people to jobs fast. Alfred Marx, plug in to the powerhouse. You never know when you'll need a local service to cheer up your home or lend a helping hand. Where you can go to find yourself a new job, a new interest, or a night on the town, your town. Why wait for the papers or wade through directories to find someone to sell your home? Whatever you need, the answer's at your fingertips on Oracle's free regional classified service. Page your Oracle and pop into your locals. New drama next Monday at 9. Hard cases. The tough world of probation. Just come into my office with me, please. please. Just keep your bloody hands off me. What do you want to? It wasn't anything to do with what happened. It wasn't anything to do with right, wrong, guilt or anything. Everybody We're knows you're guilty. Me. Everybody for that doesn't... Now! We value you too much as a professional and as a friend. We are sticking by you through this, all right? Yeah. Step into the world of hard cases. New drama starting next Monday at 9 on Thames. Kitty Cat Supreme, high in protein. Kitty Cat! To satisfy a cat's appetite for life. High protein, Kitty Cat! You couldn't have a fitter cat. Don't miss the Payless DIY sale. Pushing down prices on your DIY. Payless for DIY.
when pain strikes. You need a painkiller that's fast, effective, yet kind and gentle. Even in migraine headaches. Neurofen. Neurofen contains only ibuprofen. Its development earned us the Queen's Award for Technology. Ask your pharmacist for Neurofen. It's gentle, and you can't buy a more effective painkiller. The new Sunsil conditioner is a rich, light mousse that rinses easily away, leaving your hair in beautiful condition. Sunsilk's new conditioner. It's the secret of life in your hair. Big dog. Kind of broad at the shoulders, slim at the hip. No other bottle's better equipped. It's strong, it's thick, and it sure is mean. Kills all known germs to keep your bathroom clean. Big Dom, at your convenience, man. Big Bad Dom. Some call them toilets, some call them loose. Some are avocado, others are blue. But here's one thing you gotta get in your head. Big Dom kills all known germs stone dead. Big Dom, right under the rim, man. Big Dom. Big Dom. Big Bad Dom. Gas central heating. With Harp, it's perfectly simple. Check cost two keeps an eye on running cost. Ring 4646575 now. So, two years in New York, and he thinks he can tell us how to run things. Well, we won't have it. It's all right. I fix things. He's traveling overnight on the red eye. Not first class. Of course not. Company policy. By the time he gets in, he'll be exhausted. And he won't have had time to incorporate those new figures I sent him in his report. He'll be hungry and tired. I've arranged for the chauffeur to bring him straight here, not to the hotel. Like a lamb to the slaughter, gentlemen. Morning. New Club World delivers the businessman ready to do business. Pleasant trip. Yes, thank you. New Club World from the world's favorite airline. When you've a cold, you need all the comfort you can get. So what a relief there's Lemsip, a comforting hot lemon remedy. With paracetamol for your head, a decongestant for your nose, and something for your cough. For comfort from your cold, take Lemsip. Fresh and fragrant. Mild and caring. Timothy, enriched with natural herb extracts. To leave your hair silky and shiny, bright and beautiful. Timothy, so mild you can wash your hair as often as you like.
On this week next Thursday, Ethiopia 1988. Five, six, seven million people at risk. An emergency that threatens to become another catastrophe. This is Koram, the place where in the last Ethiopian famine, massive numbers of people died of disease and starvation. Now, they're gathering here again, thousands upon thousands of them. The famine zone is also a battleground in which these guerrillas are pitted against the might of the Ethiopian army. The struggle between them is for control of the roads. The very same roads which the grain convoys must use to reach the hungry millions. In 1988, Ethiopia needs more food than ever before. This is but the start of the emergency. Each week, there are tens of thousands more people in need. The prospect is ominous. Ethiopia, the War of the Roads, on this week, next Thursday at 8.30 on ITV. Kelsey's confidence is betrayed, and a mighty mouse and a murderer create more problems. That's in L.A. Law, and it's next tonight, here on Thames. Sierra. They said the car would break, it hasn't done that, they've broken the spirit of the opposition. Meantime, the race leader. And everything has run so superbly today for the Ruby Eggenberger Ford Texaco. Now there's a new hippopotamus. There's milk chocolate, orange chocolate, cherry chocolate, and raspberry chocolate. They're all so delicious, you've just got to dive in. Hippopotamus from Shambursi. Come on, dive in. I think I owe it to my cats to give them the best and anything less than whiskers, I'd feel I'd be cheating on a friend. My cat's brilliant. I love her. It's new. It's exciting. It's our £100,000 cash winning lines game. Get TV times this week for your exclusive lucky number and start to play. And there's more this week. Singles, a new comedy series about four lonely people who meet over a drink. We tell you just what goes on in singles bars. A roundup of 26 years of Bond movies. A high kicker who wants to be at the Super Bowl. A final chance to win super holiday prizes. The week ahead on ITV and Channel 4, all in TV times this week. Film, intrigue and action through the night, Thursday on Thames. At three, Stephanie Powers in Crescendo. I'm sorry if I startled you, miss. I want you to leave here, but I don't want you to let my mother know that I've asked you to leave. Do you understand? Ah! Ah! A web of murder and dark secrets in Crescendo. And with prisoner cell block H, a problem aired, Heat wave and surgeon and herb tree in meltdown, a night fever when Alfred Hitchcock presents, comedy in too close for comfort, and the ITN World News followed by CNN headline news. This is your Thursday through the night to Friday morning on Thames. He's back. Hal Bennett is that lovable rogue Shelley. Next Tuesday at nine on Thames. Hope you don't mind me dropping in It's been so many years Remember when we said goodbye I kissed away your tears You got married, you had kids I traveled half the world Now here you are, a woman But I still see the girl Kenko, it's what best friends share 
celebrate the end of our sale with further fashion reductions, many at half the original price. Sale ends Saturday at House of Fraser, Oxford Street in Kensington, D.H. Evans and Army and Navy. Over 120 branches throughout Britain, powerful connections to thousands of jobs. The most advanced office systems training in the country. And that means more opportunities for temporary and permanent office staff than ever before, with the energy and the power to match people to jobs fast. Alfred Marx, plug in to the powerhouse. This year, in Ireland, you can expect the green carpet treatment. Whether you're behind the wheel or behind the reel. A round of golf or a round of oysters. A boat for the day or a castle to stay. Fares to and prices in Ireland will be music to your ears. Sealink will take your car and up to five people by the fastest routes from £59.50 single. Call Free Phone Ireland now. There is an art to making white wine and mushroom sauce. The art of blending white wine. Mushrooms picked in their prime. Ripe green and red peppers. Onions and fresh herbs and spices. Now and all have refined that art, for we have found a way of keeping it so that every time you use it, it will taste as fresh as the day it was made. Nor recipe sources, fresh ways to make classic casseroles. With a Paston's boneless lamb joint, you're perfectly prepared for Sunday guests. There's a revolutionary sweetener that tastes as good as sugar. Candorel Spoonful. It contains NutraSweet, so it has no bitter aftertaste. Just like sugar. And because it's granular, you sprinkle it in just the same quantity as sugar. Candorel Spoonful. The revolutionary sweetener that tastes as good as sugar. When serving lamb, remember past and select only the finest joints. Carefully hand bone and trim them, then freeze them straight away, so they're perfectly prepared for every occasion. After all, the lamb should arrive at the table gently flushed with pink and steaming. Not you. Be perfectly prepared with Paston's New Zealand lamb. you by Holiday Club Pontins, where there never is one. Phone for a brochure on 0772 622 622 and see for yourself. So, two years in New York and he thinks he can tell us how to run things. Well, we won't have it. It's all right. I fix things. He's travelling overnight on the red eye. Not first class. Of course not. Company policy. By the time he gets in, he'll be exhausted. And he won't have had time to incorporate those new figures I sent him in his report. He'll be hungry and tired. I've arranged for the chauffeur to bring him straight here, not to the hotel. Like a lamb to the slaughter, gentlemen. Good morning. New Club World delivers the businessman ready to do business. Pleasant trip. Yes, thank you. New Club World from the world's favorite airline.
Well, I think we've got something of a problem, but I probably guess you ascertained that for yourselves. We actually are awaiting the, the news from uh, ITN in just a moment, and I've just had a flash to say that the problem seems to have been solved, so back to them. Next Tuesday at 8, be on the lookout for a special combination. I need a partner. You know, someone who's straight, honest, hardwood, loyal, all those old-fashioned values. We are talking about Arthur Daly, aren't we? You're not going to cry, are you? Of course not. I'm not after sympathy, Andrew. I'm after money. A little limp, perhaps. All the great ideas in history were simple, my son. But I immoral and all. You couldn't even spell that. They're back in Minder next Tuesday at 8 on Thames. John's mum is longing for a letter from him, and he'd love to write it, but he just doesn't have the time. Life's such a rat race. He's rushed off his feet, dealing with constant changes, keeping his eye on the ball, people demanding things. Tea, coffee. Pick up yeah. a pen. It's hard enough for him to pick up his train of thought. Juggling ten things at once, then there's decisions, decisions, decisions. Why not make a decision to write today? By hand? New Weller Balsam Shampoo and Conditioner with natural coconut, with natural herbs, with wild mint. Now, your hair is better dressed. From the New York skyline to the New York skyline. From New York's night spots to New York's night spots. New York State has more to offer than you ever dreamed of. And it's all yours on Pan Am, the official I Love New York airline. With three flights a day to New York, Pan Am Express flights to Syracuse, Rochester, and Albany, and some great holidays for you to explore it all. Call Pan Am now for our brochure. When it's time again to think of something new that's interesting, fun, and new, to just two and me. Lean on pork for a whole new angle on a midday snack. That sets you up but doesn't set you back Then lean, lean on pork British pork has what it takes It's lean and tasty for goodness sakes So give them a meal they appreciate Lean on pork, lean on British pork Wow, I'm feeling so smart today, Annie. Forget it, Jeff. You'll never be as smart as the new Moffat Discovery Cooker. Quite right, Annie. With its gas-powered discs, ultra-clean hot plate and 60-pound trade-in, you can't get a more contemporary cooker. Nor as classically good-looking as the Canon Live Fire, Jeff. Which, in its handsome surround, happens to be the last word in living flame fires, putting out an astonishing amount of heat. No, Annie, but I am a very warm human being. Gas people go to their British gas showroom. It's new. It's exciting. It's our £100,000 cash winning lines game. Get TV times this week for your exclusive lucky number and start to play. And there's more this week. Singles, a new comedy series about four lonely people who meet over a drink. We tell you just what goes on in singles bars. A roundup of 26 years of Bond movies. A high kicker who wants to be at the Super Bowl. A final chance to win super holiday prizes. The week ahead on ITV and Channel 4, all in TV times this week. Hi, I'm Jim Kelly, quarterback of the Buffalo Bills. Watch Super Bowl 22. Whatever you do, don't miss it. Sunday at 10.45, Channel 4. This is Thames from London. Don't forget, after the local news and the at 10.35, there's a city programme. But now it's time for the world news from ITN. The appeal of the six Birmingham pub bombers is rejected. Mr. Hockey's government greets the news with great regret. Irish police find a big new arms cache on the coast. Mrs. Thatcher says no new health charges in this parliament. And the Princess of Wales shows off her Rachmaninoff. Good evening. 
The six Irishmen jailed for life for the murder of 21 people in the Birmingham pub bombings in 1974 are back in prison tonight after their appeal was dismissed at the Old Bailey. Three appeal court judges rejected claims that police had beaten the men to obtain confessions and they upheld forensic evidence that showed two of the six had handled explosives. The men are now seeking leave to appeal to the House of Lords. Giving judgment, the Lord Chief Justice, Lord Lane, said, there's no doubt these convictions are both safe and satisfactory. The jury was correct in its verdict. The Birmingham Six arrived at the Old Bailey this morning under tight security for the judgment on their appeal. It was the latest stage in a 13-year battle by the men to prove their innocence. Relatives of the Six who've campaigned for their freedom also arrived early to queue for the public gallery. Outside the Old Bailey, Dr Frank Skuse, the forensic scientist whose evidence helped secure the original convictions. This afternoon, at the end of a judgment lasting five hours, the Court of Appeal gave their findings. They found that the men had not had confessions beaten out of them by the police and that the forensic evidence was valid. Lord Lane, the Lord Chief Justice, summed up saying, we have no doubt that these convictions are both safe and satisfactory. The convicted men heard the judgment in silence, but waved and smiled to family and friends as they went down into the cells after the hearing. But afterwards, the relatives were angry about the verdict. Terrible, it's terrible. Yeah, we think would happen this way, would come out this way. Yeah, I had a good idea, yeah. I haven't got any faith in British justice at all. What can you do now? Well, until I drop dead, or some of my family drop dead, the fight will go on, until these men are released, until the British government admit to this uh, error of judgment. Well, I know them. I've known them for longer than the Court of Appeal. I know three of them. I've been visiting them over a long period of time, corresponding with them. And I'm quite satisfied that they are innocent men. As the six were taken away to complete their life sentences at separate prisons, their lawyers were considering applying for a further appeal to the House of Lords. Tonight, the wife of one prisoner spoke about her feelings. Well, from the, in the beginning, I kept it thinking to myself, right, these men probably wouldn't get out, but today, I just thought they would walk out. And when they, when they came out the verdict, I just went numb. I, I think my whole heart stopped beating. I just could not believe it. But in Birmingham this evening, a couple who survived the bombing said they were certain the six are the terrorists responsible. We were always convinced that they had the right people. Uh, it would have been a, a terrible feeling if these people had been let go because there was 21 killed and it's still the biggest mass murder in this country and there are 200 people injured and it's a very very good feeling to know that we think they've got the right people British justice is supposed to be the best in the world and it's been proved to be the best in the world to us Lord Denning, the former Master of the Rolls, who rejected the accusations of priest brutality when he was on the Court of Appeal eight years ago, says today's judgment vindicated him. In his ruling, he'd said that if the six men were telling the truth, then it would mean the police were guilty of perjury, violence and threats. Tonight, Lord Denning said the new evidence produced to support the Birmingham Six was worthless. Well, that new evidence has been examined by the Lord Chief Justice and his colleagues, and it doesn't amount to a row of pins in this way. There's no reason whatever to suppose that the original conviction was anything but perfectly right and correct. So I, if I may say so, I would entirely endorse and support what the Lord Chief Justice and his colleagues have done. The pub bombings were the biggest ever case of terrorist mass murder in Britain. They happened in November 1974, at the end of a year in which IRA bombs killed 41 people on the British mainland. The tavern in the town and the mulberry bush on the night of November the 21st, 1974. 21 people dead, more than 160 injured as the bombs went off. A warning had been telephoned, but it was too late to avert the biggest mass murder in Britain this century. Anti-Irish reaction was immediate as thousands marched through Birmingham to show their disgust. A week before the Birmingham bombings, Coventry Telephone Exchange was damaged when James McDade, later identified as an IRA man, blew himself to pieces with his own bomb. The six men whose convictions were upheld all knew McDade. Five of them were to claim they left Birmingham to attend his funeral in Belfast. According to the Crown, the men planted their bombs in the Rotunda and in New Street before walking across to the station. There, five of them boarded a train bound for the Lancashire port of Hesham and the ferry for Belfast. The sixth man, Hugh Callaghan, said the Crown, very unusually for a bomber, actually witnessed the explosions. 
A ticket collector was to remember several Irishmen travelling together to Belfast. As the five men arrived at Hesham, they were detained. Three days after the bombing, and West Midlands police called a news conference to say six men had been charged with the bombings. As a result of the inquiries that have been made, uh, six people have been charged with being concerned with each other in the murder of Miss Jane Davis, aged 17 years. At a high security trial at Lancaster Castle the following summer, the men were sentenced to a minimum 25 years imprisonment. Three subsequent court actions, including a previous appeal, were to fail. But two years ago, a book by Chris Mullen, now a Labour MP, proclaimed the men's innocence. And two programmes by Granada Television's World in Action team uncovered additional evidence said to undermine the prosecution case. In January last year, the Home Secretary, Douglas Hurd, decided there was enough new evidence to refer the case back to the Court of Appeal. At issue was the evidence of Home Office forensic scientist Frank Skuse, who carried out the explosive tests. The Irishman's lawyer said subsequent scientific tests had shown that Dr. Skuse's findings were unreliable. But in the witness box, Dr. Skuse stood up to stern cross-examination in front of the three judges. At Morecambe Police Station that November dawn, waiting detectives had heard from Dr. Skuse that the men had handled explosives. Within two days, four of the six men had signed confessions, confessions which they said were brutally beaten out of them by police. William Bailey, a cleaner at Morecambe Police Station, had said he'd seen blood smeared over cell walls, but the appeal judges said this did not tie in with what the men in custody themselves had said. Joyce Linus, a former Birmingham policewoman, told the court she'd seen two officers pinioning one of the men while another kneed him in the groin. But the judges said she'd perjured herself and was a witness not worthy of belief. And Tom Clark, a former Birmingham policeman, claimed he'd seen bruising on the men's bodies. But the judges said he was embittered against his former police colleagues and was a most unconvincing witness. The appeal of the Old Bailey, which started in November, lasted seven weeks and cost a million pounds. Yet it's unlikely to end the affair. The supporters of the prisoners say if their bid to go to the House of Lords fails, they'll take the case to the European Commission of Human Rights. There's anger at the decision in the Republic of Ireland. The government said they'd learned of the judgment with great regret. The former Irish Foreign Minister, Mr Peter Barry, said the fight to establish the men's innocence would continue. There'll be great disappointment in Ireland. I think there'll be huge disappointment here as well. And I, I think that um, we are so convinced of their innocence that we're not just going to stop, even if the House of Lords appeal goes, uh, the House of Lords turns down the appeal, uh, I, I believe there'll be a movement to, to appeal again and to try and get the process restarted so that a further appeal can be held until they're released. It's the second time this week that Irish displeasure has been directed at British justice. The first time was when the Attorney General said there'd be no prosecutions of RUC men for allegedly operating a shoot-to-kill policy in Northern Ireland. Today, the Irish Prime Minister, Mr Hockey, said that decision could have serious implications for cross-border security. Prime Minister Charles Hawhey has now, in the past couple of days, had to deal with two British actions which have angered and dismayed both himself and many others in Ireland. This afternoon, he dealt first with the British decision not to prosecute any RUC officers following the shoot-to-kill inquiry, and in a statement to the Doyle laid down a clear mark as to why he thought the British had bungled. It must be clear to any reasonable observer that the only persons likely to benefit from what has now happened are the paramilitaries. I would have thought that a decision to prosecute would be in the best interest of the RUC and that they would have welcomed action by the British authorities to uphold the principle that in a democratic society, the use of lethal force by the police must be the very last resort. Later, in a terse statement, the government said the verdict in the Birmingham Six appeal had not removed serious concern across a wide spectrum in Ireland and Britain that there had been a miscarriage of justice, a point taken up by opposition leader Alan Dukes. It would certainly be a shock to a great many people here because, as, just like me, they were, they were impressed uh, by the witnesses for the six, uh, and I think uh, not at all impressed, uh, in some cases, with the handling of the case uh, from the bench. But Justice Minister Jerry Collins reserved his main anger for the lack of action on the shoot-to-kill inquiry. We had been making such good success in security cooperation, and now we have the whole thing turned on its heels as a result of a, an, an, a, a statement that nobody here expected or could have expected in, in any stretch of the imagination, a statement uh, of a position 
uh, that shows a total lack of realization of what's involved, the sensitivity of the whole thing. I mean, here we have, we have people not now going to be prosecuted for giving instructions that perjury be committed. Uh, people who deliberately subverted law. We have a whole, uh, we have the whole uh, administration of justice, you know, with a, with a colossal question mark over it right now. It's, it's a very serious matter and one that won't go away. When the appeal began, there were widespread hopes here that it would be allowed. Those hopes have now been dashed and this, coupled with the other row about the shoot to kill inquiry, means that confidence in the Anglo-Irish agreement has received a double body blow and that improvement in cross-border security cooperation, which might have been hoped for, will now be seriously affected. Desmond Hamill, News at 10, Dublin. In the House of Commons, the Northern Ireland Secretary, Mr Tom King, said there could be disciplinary proceedings against members of the Royal Ulster Constabulary in connection with the alleged shoot-to-kill policy. He confirmed the Attorney General's view that there had been evidence of wrongdoing, but said prosecutions were not in the public interest. He denied there had been a cover-up. It is simply unacceptable to imply that an uh, attempt to cover up in this area when my right honourable friend made absolutely clear that there was evidence, and I have made clear to the House that that evidence is not going to be suppressed, but that it will be available uh, and will be taken into account in the context of the question of disciplinary proceedings. Police in the Irish Republic say there may be a Libyan link with today's big arms find in County Donegal. It includes nearly a hundred rifles, five heavy machine guns and explosives. The arms were dug up on a holiday beach near Malin. A man from Londonderry is being questioned by police about the find. The arms smugglers had chosen this isolated coastline known as Five Finger Strand to bring their deadly shipment ashore. Irish police and army had been watching the beach for several days following reports of suspicious activity. They discovered, buried in the dunes, two separate and substantial arms caches, each hidden inside 600-gallon oil storage tanks. A heavy machine gun was one of the first weapons uncovered, but a Land Rover was needed to extract the huge drums from their hiding place before the size of the find became clear. Inside the containers, 100 Kalashnikov rifles, most still inside their wrappers. Machine guns mounted on tripods, 50,000 rounds of ammunition, and a large quantity of explosives. Most of the weapons are of East European origin. The police believe the shipment was bound for the IRA in Londonderry, just 20 miles down the coast from here. The find was considered significant enough for munitions experts to be flown in from Dublin to make an on-the-spot assessment of the terrorist arsenal. Rather than move some of the explosives, the decision was taken to destroy them. The Irish Army has sealed off the area around Five Finger Strand, hoping to find some trace of whoever brought the weapons ashore. This is the first major success of the massive search operation launched on both sides of the border to find shiploads of arms from Libya believed to have been smuggled to the IRA. Security chiefs in Dublin are said to be delighted. Paul Davis, News at 10, Five Finger Strand, Donegal. Mrs Thatcher told the Commons today that the pledges on health she gave before the last election still stand. This means no hotel charges for hospital patients in the life of this Parliament, a report in part two. Also, the Contras and the Nicaraguan government talk about a ceasefire for the first time. And well done for playing so nicely. That's in a couple of minutes.
new Peugeot 405 takes your breath away. This man made a lot of money. He traveled the world and became a huge success in a cutthroat business by persuading complete strangers to give him their valuables. Unfortunately for Captain Kidd, Eagle Star weren't around at the time, so he put his money into an obscure offshore tax haven. And when he came back, he found he'd lost the lot. Take care of your treasure. Ask your financial advisor about Eagle Star's investment plans. Because with Eagle Star, you can face the future with confidence. From the New York skyline to the New York skyline. From New York's night spots to New York's night spots. New York State has more to offer than you ever dreamed of. And it's all yours on Pan Am, the official I Love New York airline. With three flights a day to New York, Pan Am Express flights to Syracuse, Rochester, and Albany, and some great holidays for you to explore it all. Call Pan Am now for our brochure. Mrs Thatcher has told the Commons there will be no extra health service charges before the next election. She was answering a question from the opposition leader, Mr Kinnock. Later, at a special news conference, Mr Kinnock accused the government of making a shambles of its health policy. Early this week, the government indicated there'd be a speedy review of the NHS and that options such as hotel charges for patients were on the cards. The TUC decided today to organise a national day of protest on March the 5th. The Labour Party are tonight claiming credit for reining back the Prime Minister in the radical review she's announced of the health service. On Monday, Mrs Thatcher said the review would consider all options for increasing resources and said a Royal Commission would take too long. And on Tuesday, it was said on her behalf, everything was on the table, including bed and breakfast type hospital charges. Decisions would have to reflect changing attitudes. But today in the Commons, the Labour leader, Mr Kinnock, pressed her to say whether she stood by her election pledge, ruling out charging patients for doctor and hospital visits and family planning. The statements made during the general election stand, I have said so before and I say so again, they stand for the lifetime of this Parliament. By the time the next Parliament comes, we shall have completed the internal review and will then make... And, and we shall make our promises then, which will stand for the following Parliament. That means that whatever the Health Service Review decides, there'll be no health charges this side of a general election. And some Tory MPs are saying tonight the government wouldn't dare fight the next election pledging to introduce them. So any immediate changes will have to be limited to other ways of raising money, like encouraging more private medicine, and the latest idea apparently on Mrs Thatcher's table, a national lottery whose profits would go entirely to the health service. Ford car workers rejected an improved company pay offer tonight. Union leaders say an all-out strike by 32,000 workers will start on Monday unless Ford asks for more talks. Britain's trade figures stayed firmly in the red last month. The current account deficit was £582 million, slightly better than in November. Last year's total shortfall of almost £2.7 thousand was the worst for 13 years, but that's only fractionally higher than Treasury predictions, and the markets reacted calmly. The 100 share index rose 18 points. Government and rebel leaders from Nicaragua are meeting in Costa Rica for their first direct peace talks since fighting began six years ago. The American-backed Contras want the Sandinista government to accept major political reforms before they sign a ceasefire. Today's meeting comes as President Reagan is urging Congress to approve another $36 million aid package for the rebels. These were the first face-to-face -face talks between the Sandinistas and the Contras for six years. And as the negotiations began, there were already sharp differences. The Contras want to discuss Nicaraguan political issues. The Sandinistas have repeatedly rejected that demand. The man in the middle now, Nicaraguan church leader Bishop Bosco Vivas, who's acting as mediator. In Washington, meanwhile, Ronald Reagan's latest request for Contra aid arrived on Capitol Hill, where it'll be debated next week. 
Mr. Reagan, welcoming Egypt's President Mubarak to the White House today, is asking for $36 million over four months. Nearly four million of that is for weapons. But it's proposed the military aid should be frozen until the end of March pending a ceasefire. A spokesman for the president said today the proposal had a relatively good chance of success on Capitol Hill, but with widespread opposition from the Democrats who control Congress, the lines are being drawn for a fierce battle. This is no time for America to invest more deficit money into this war.